Today we are interviewing Ms. Mino Arora, who uh, is the Associate uh, Director of Outreach at Kriya University. She's a counseling psychologist and a life skill trainer, having done a master's in education, master's in psychology, and a diploma in training and development. And she specializes in educational counseling. Uh, she has played an active role in spreading awareness about the significance of liberal education among students and parents. So what is liberal arts? Thank you, Johan, for inviting me. So liberal arts is basically when we people say liberal arts, it includes sciences as well. So it is not a, a, a particular discipline. Basically, it is an approach to learning and it includes the natural sciences, that is physics, chemistry, biology, social sciences, which includes political science, psychology, anthropology, economics, and sociology, and also humanities, including history, philosophy, language, uh, visual arts, and of course, not to forget math. So it is basically, there is a T-shaped uh, you know, definition of uh, liberal arts. It is a broad-based knowledge in various subjects along with in-depth knowledge about one subject and the skill set, uh, you know, which is required for the future world of work. Great. Uh, now that we have understood what liberal arts uh, constitutes of, uh, it is a relatively new concept. And over the past decade, many universities have started uh, across the liberal arts universities have started across the country. And so what do you feel are the advantages and disadvantages? Uh, no, sorry, advantages of liberal arts over uh, conventional universities and degrees? See, conventional universities basically uh, train a student in the theory part. You know, uh, suppose for example, if you're doing psychology honors, then you will study only psychology for all the three years. I myself did psychology from a conventional university, but after completing your undergrad program, you're still wondering. What kind of skills, you know, uh, how am I applying uh, psychological skills in my real life practice in the world of work? So that way, liberal arts have uh, an advantage over conventional way of working because in liberal arts, you are going to study different subjects together. You will learn, uh, you know, how to connect dots from various disciplines to solve a problem. So you will not study psychology as psychology, but you will also study how psychology is linked with economics, for example, linked with computer science linked with data analysis. So it if conventional universities focus on the curriculum and what to think and what to learn, a liberal art course will focus on how to think and how to learn. So that is the main thing which is required for the future VUCA world, which we call it as you know volatile, uncertain, and the ambiguity which is there in the future world of work. Uh, so when the entire world is interconnected, you know, you cannot learn subjects in silos. You have to, this is the need of the art to study liberal arts. So right. And so can you share some details about Kriya's School of Indian Arts and Sciences? Yes, of course. You know, Kriya is the pioneer in interwoven arts and sciences. And here I would like to emphasize on one uh, uh, difference, major difference between uh, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary and the interwoven learning model. You know, when the university says we have multidisciplinary course, that means they are maybe they are uh, teaching you subjects from different disciplines, but they might be teaching you in silos that is multidisciplinary. Interdisciplinary where two subjects, for example, psychology and biology are related to each other. Now, when I say interwoven learning model at CREA, we try to see that how the past, uh, the past is weaved into the future through the present, how Western concepts are weaved into the Eastern concepts, how theory is weaved into the practical. Now, if you're studying two subjects, for example, psychology and biology, you don't study it as silos, but you study biology from the lens of psychology and you study psychology from the lens of biology. You study that how these two are just weaved into each other. So that is the uh, beauty of interwoven learning model. And again, it is an approach. And when we talk about CREA, interwoven learning model has basically eight components. So all the courses at CREA, BA or BSc, all are very, very writing intensive. Uh, we uh, aim to develop research aptitude. All of them are interdisciplinary, ethics, immersive learning experience, data analytics. So all these are a very integral part of any course which you do at CREA. 
apart from this, uh, when we say interwoman learning model, and when it is based on the, uh, you know, liberal arts is the DNA of interwoman learning model, the first year, the students don't need to declare their major minor. So they can come undecided. And in the first year, they just study the core courses and the skill courses, including social analysis, mathematical reasoning, philosophical analysis, computer science, communication, you know, all these subjects, they, uh, they the skills they study in the first year and only in the beginning of the second year, they declare their major minor combination. Again, it can be from various disciplines. They can do history with biology, for example. All right. And I also wanted to ask, what are the life skills you feel are important for students who uh, want to prepare themselves for university and work? See, as far as preparing uh, for the university is concerned, my main mantra for students will be that, first of all, don't try to be something else in order to fit into a university. Because it is not just the admission, you are going to be there for four years or five years, whatever course you have taken. And not only that, you know, and don't take a subject just because, you know, it is more popular. So when we say best fit university, you know, uh, all the uh, new age universities or liberal arts universities are looking for a skill set. And you don't need to develop a skill set in order to get into a university. You need to develop a skill set if you want to be successful in your career, because you know that is needed, whether you are a science student, commerce student, or a humanities student. These skill set is very, very necessary. So there are a few things which I would like to emphasize on. You know, students should develop, first of all, four Cs. So when I say four Cs, it means creativity, uh, communication skills, collaborative skills, and critical thinking. Because whatever work can be done with AI and machine learning, you know, it can it will be done by that. So you have to see why you are important as a human being. So these four Cs are extremely important, whichever career you want to pursue in future. And of course, this will also help you in getting admission into a university because, you know, many universities go through interview or group discussion or case analysis. So if you develop these four Cs, definitely you will do well in these entrance exams. Secondly, try to develop different perspectives to look at a problem. Because, uh, you know, in, in school, we are trained to look at a problem from only from one subject perspective, but try to develop, you know, different perspectives towards the same thing, you know, because that helps you develop another skill, which is empathy. Empathy, resilience, clarity of thought, you know, again, these are important qualities or skill set competencies, which you need to develop. And um, also, uh, you know, don't just... Uh, try to uh, get scores in your exams. Uh, scores matter to some extent, but what is more important is whether you have learned something or not. So don't forget to enjoy the process of learning because as far as future is concerned, future is all about lifelong learners. And, uh, you know, don't think that once you finish your undergrad and then, you know, you will be okay and you will be working. You need to, uh, you need to learn all the time because future is all about changing careers. I'm not talking about changing jobs, but changing careers. And, and you know, for that, you need to be a very flexible. We call it as cognitive flexibility. So if you're agile, if you uh, know the purpose of your life, if you uh, have the cognitive flexibility, it will be easier for you to shift to various careers. It can be within the same domain, maybe in the education domain only, but you can take up different roles. And Last but not the least, which is very, very important, I always say that maybe in schools, you know, you are being taught how to participate in a race. So everybody wants to win and that win, win that race, you know, either uh, getting the highest marks in the class or, uh, you know, uh, getting into the best university. It's all race. But remember that as soon as you get into a world of work, people want you to collaborate, not compete. So then you have to do marathon and not the race, you know, because in marathon, uh, you you move, you uh, you walk along with others and, and you wait for others sometimes to join you to reach the uh, end point, you know. So always remember that future is all about collaboration and not competition. So you have to really maintain a balance between the skill set and the knowledge which you are gaining. 